Hello, welcome to today's message. We had a wonderful time in worship this morning. And I'm going to start by sharing um, that the message is about restoration, and that's the topic today. But I wanted to start by sharing about uh, chooks and the malt. I own some chooks, and God spoke to me about my chooks and through my chooks. So I wanted to share about the chooks. Recently, my chooks have been going through their malt for the season, one at a time unfortunately. Feathers have been dropping everywhere and I've brought some feathers. Can you see? And when they drop, they go everywhere. They just fill up the whole nest box. They fill up the whole chook house. They fill up all their little places around the yard, their favorite spots, and it looks like one big pillow fight. Have you ever had a pillow fight with feathers and a pillow's bursted? Well, that's exactly what it looks like when a chook molts. By observing them and watching the different stages, I believe God had spoken to me. Let me explain. Chooks all go through a molting stage. It actually means that they are healthy and doing what God has created them to do and to be. This is when they stop producing eggs, they give their bodies a rest and shed the old feathers. The first stage that begins is when their body rests. It stops working, um, they stop working as much in the yard, you know, they're searching for food and, and, and turning the yard, the ground over, and they stop producing, they stop laying eggs. Even roosters go through a molt. And then begins the molt. They pluck out their feathers. They forci forcibly remove all the old feathers, shedding the old. And every feather has a shaft right down to the end. And a chook knows that for a new feather to come out, they have to get rid of the old and they make it come out and it drops off. Now, during this time, um, they continue to preen, which is when they rub their beak at the base of the feathers, that's near the shaft where it meets the skin to release the oils, to keep them clean and fresh, to prepare the way for the new feathers to come through. Now, at this time, this season that a chook goes through, it's ugly. They look they look really ugly. It's colder, understandably, because they're bare and they're barren. They can go through a hard molt when the whole, nearly the whole chook of feathers are molted and they can go through what's called a soft molt, which is when they're a bit patchy, but they're still raw and vulnerable. Chocks often do less to conserve their energy during this process, almost like a lockdown. They need extra care in the process, extra protein, extra treats, extra love. Even chooks' clothing, if you feel so inclined, if your climate's really cold, there are people that make chooks' clothing. After this time, the new growth begins. New protective and insulating feathers form and begin to cover the chook once again. They will be shiny. They will look refreshed and whole again, like brand new. In time, the chook will begin to work and produce laying again. God showed me that the chook hasn't gone through an ugly, horrible time. The chook has gone through a restoration, a phase of renewing. God has restored the chook. So the theme and topic for today is restoration. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 10 to 11 in the New King James says, but may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen and settle you, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And I also liked it in the New Living, it says that in his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus, so that after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation, all power to him forever. Amen. Our assurance from this scripture is that we are called by Jesus and that yes, we will have suffering. And hasn't this season in the year 2020 had its suffering for all of us in different ways? But the reassuring thing is that through any suffering, God will establish us. God will perfect us. God will restore us. God will strengthen us and keep us firmly in place. So during this season of COVID-19, hasn't our lives been turned upside down? 
We've been forced to live in a very different way to what we're used to. We've had privileges, which maybe we didn't even realize were privileges, stripped away. We've had restrictions and constraints being forced upon us. We've had crazy people panic buying, and we've been then learning to cope with the bare essentials. We've seen suffering at home and globally. We've seen death. We've seen brokenness. We've seen isolation. We've seen loneliness. We've seen oppression, and we've seen fear in our homes, in our town, and around the world. Everyone has been affected in some way during this season. But we've also seen globally during this pandemic togetherness in a new way. People have stepped up outside their comfort zones and embraced technology as a new way to reach others and to stay connected. Not to mention the increase in parcels that the post has delivered to our doors. Even in our own midst, as you know, we've embraced YouTube as an avenue to bring worship and messages to you each Sunday. We've all become experts with Zoom, haven't we? Or other video FaceTime apps to help us all stay connected, whether that's through our remote learning for children on school and universities or just families staying connected and friends. Our Bible college has continued every week through this time. Our prayer meetings have continued also. Even our Rapids youth group have continued to meet via Zoom and when restrictions lifted in homes together. We've embraced a new way to be together. We've also seen globally hope in the midst of despair. We have seen light shining in this crazy dark time and we've seen fears being faced and families spending time together. God's people around the world have stepped up. Many Christians have united in prayer, in worship, in teachings about God. And God is doing a new thing. God showed me that the COVID-19 season that we have been in has been a season of restoration. How? Why, do you ask? Well, let's look at it. Point one, what is restoration? Restoration in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary it says that it is an act of restoring or the condition of being restored, such as bringing back to a former position or condition and restoring to an improved condition. Other words for restoring and restored are renew, restore, refresh, renovate and rejuvenate. They all mean to make like new. Renew implies a restoration of what had become faded or disintegrated so that it, it seems like new. Restore implies a return to an original state after depletion or loss. Refresh implies the supplying of something necessary to restore lost strength, animation and power. Renovate suggests a renewing by cleansing, repairing or rebuilding. Rejuvenate suggests the restoration of youthful vigor, power or appearance. And that all came from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Restoration is the place where the old things pass away and makes way for the new to come. It is a place where once we may have been tired or exhausted or maybe in sin, God refreshes us, God cleanses us and strengthens us, restoring ourselves to him. When I read that definition and the other words to help describe restored in the dictionary, I couldn't help but think of our maker. God is the one who renews us. God is the one who cleanses us, who strengthens us. God is the one who transforms us into the image of Jesus Christ. God is our restorer. In Psalm 51 verses 10 to 12, David says in Psalm 51, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Romans 12 verses 1 to 2 says, and we should know this, do not be conformed to this world, but 
Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Psalm 31, verse 24. It says, Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. And Ephesians 4 Verse 23 from the New Living says, Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. God is our restorer. He is the one who cleanses us from sin through the blood of Jesus Christ, who strengthens us when we are weak, who renews us and upholds us. And John 1 Sorry, 1 John, chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, I think, says, which affirms is that, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. This is restoration. Our God, the restorer, is in the restoration business. Are we in partnership with the restorer? Point two, places that restoration happens. There's two areas that restoration will happen. Restoration with our God and restoration with others. Are we in restoration with our restorer and are we in restoration with those around us? In seasons of restoration, there is actually no procrastinating, no time wasting, no delaying or putting off because it is happening. Think of the chook. Can a chook resist the malt? Can it stop time and delay the inevitable? No, it cannot. God has the chook in his hands and his timetable. God's law of nature is at work. In restoration seasons, the time is now. It is happening. It is moving and it is changing. The old has to be rid for the new to come and grow god has already explained to us quite clearly about this in the bible as an example with garments and wine and that's in luke 5 i'm sure you will all remember it and and recognize it when i read it verse 36 to 38 luke chapter 5 it says then he spoke a parable to them no one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one Otherwise, the new makes a tear. And also the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. Have you ever tried it? It doesn't work. Verse 37. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins or else the new wine will burst the wineskins and be spilled and the wineskins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into new wineskins and both are preserved. New wine, new wineskins. New garment with a new. Does a chook appear ugly and disfigured and uncomfortable during a molt? Yes, yes, and yes. And the same is with us. We must first always check that are we restored in God? When God reveals to us, whether that be through his word, through a brother or sister in Christ, through our prayer or devotion time, that we have areas of sin that need cleaning up. It feels uncomfortable. It can feel and appear quite ugly when we're being shown our true reflection in God's mirror. But when we turn to him, when we submit to him, trusting him, thanking Jesus for his sacrifice and washing us clean by his blood, and asking the Holy Spirit to help us walk in a new and clean way, we come out of it shiny, new, refreshed, 
and restored in Jesus. Colossians 3 verse 10 from the New Living. It says, put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. We are destined to put on our new nature and be renewed. Amen. This time of COVID-19 has certainly revealed the true colors of people. The good, the bad and the ugly. And I'm not just talking about the lost who are still in, the, in this world. It's actually you and me, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I am certain that I'm not the only one that during this time of isolation and lockdown, that God has spoken to you about your true nature before him, just like he has spoken to me. 2 Corinthians 4.16 encourages us. 2 Corinthians 4.16 says, Therefore do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Don't lose heart. Things might be going on around us and, and with our outward man, but the inward man, that's where God is in the business of, the restoration. The inward man is being renewed day by day. Have we trusted God or allowed fear to overwhelm us in this time? Have we looked unto him alone or have we been tossed to and fro by the world's media and the information around us have we lived in joy or have we spiraled down in sadness and worry have we believed that god is still god or has doubt clouded us and challenged us in our eternal faith have we used this time to come closer to god or been distracted by all the technology devices that we have on offer. Have we remembered what we have learnt in our walks with Jesus? Or have we forgotten his very words to us? Have we challenged ourselves to still find ways to evangelize in this new season? Or do we feel trapped and bound? Remind yourself, we know Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. We can do this because Christ is the one that will strengthen us and restore us. When we have checked in with our God and made sure that we are restored in him first, he will then challenge us to look at our relationships around us to others. That often means those closest to us first. And that will often mean your family your spouse, your siblings, your parents. And then it will continue and overflow to the circles of friendships that are outside of your immediate circle. This leads me to point two, knowing how to be restored. The key to being restored in our relationship in Christ and with each other is knowing how to be in restoration and not resist the process. The chook doesn't resist the process, but submits to the process. The same way that we can do this is by being brave and checking in with God. This is how we are to be in restoration with him. We ask God to examine us. Be brave. It's okay. Ask him and see if there is any ugliness before him that needs tending to, that needs cleaning up, that needs to be restored back to him. It does take great courage to allow the restorer to actually restore us. But we know already there is great comfort and rewards of this process, rewards of strength, of being perfected in him, of being restored in him, of new vigor and zest for life. This season of COVID-19 has been challenging. This season has been hard. This season has been different, very different. Our world changed almost overnight. But do you know what? God didn't change. God doesn't change because he is the same today. He is the same yesterday and he is the same tomorrow. He is our restorer. Point four. 
Restoration is a time of rebuilding and renewing. Looking back at 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 10 and 11, it reminds us of the rebuilding and renewing that takes place during a restoration season. In the Passion Translation, it says that, And then, after your brief suffering, the God of all loving grace, who has called you to share in his eternal glory in Christ, will personally and powerfully restore you and make you stronger than ever. Yes, he will set you firmly in place and build you up. And he has all the power needed to do this forever. Amen. Amen. There is no restoration without uprooting and shedding the old, just like chooks and malting. Even though the old has to be shed, or let's say rather our sins need to be repented of or strongholds delivered, in that process, we can be encouraged because Christ wants to powerfully restore us. He wants to make us stronger than ever. He wants to set us firmly in place and build us up in him. We need to trust God. We need to know his character and nature. We know that he will provide for us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. We need to put God first. Amen. Because God is the one that will see us through this time and any other future challenging seasons that we may face in our life. In seasons of restoration, we also all need to be more attentive to the Holy Spirit and his prompting. Think of Joseph with Mary and baby Jesus. Joseph was attentive to the Spirit's voice and his prompting and leading. And in and in doing that, he was able to get Mary and baby Jesus out. Imagine if he hadn't have been attentive to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our guide. He is our teacher and our helper. He is there waiting, just waiting for us to be brave, have courage and boldness, and to seek him out to examine us. He will help us with our relationship with God and with those around us. Are we listening to him? Are we seeking out the Holy Spirit? Regarding our relationships with each other, I came across this quote from Angus Buchan. He's in South Africa. He, it says, Unforgiveness can turn to hatred, and that is a burden that becomes so heavy that it will eventually kill you. So go swiftly to the person who has trespassed against us, often close to home, and tell them what has offended you, upset you, and make up. Restore the relationship so that Jesus Christ can remove your burden. God knows that unforgiveness can be a wound that will bind us up. It is often one of the things that we need to shed or repent of before he can do a new thing in our life. He teaches us to go to our brother to not let the sun set without trying to resolve the issue. To forgive up to 77 times 7 times each day. We know these things. This is what God has taught us from his word. We just need to be brave enough to examine our hearts and allow God to restore us in our relationships around us. Pursuing these things is a place of rebuilding and renewing our relationships. This brings me to our last point, five, reflection. Our God is the restorer and he is in the restoration business. This all began when I read 1 Peter 5 verse 10. And so as you do, you read before and after. And I was really encouraged. We actually know this passage and there is such encouragement and hope in them. Let's read it together. We're going to turn back to 1 Peter 5 and we're going to start at verse 5 this time. And I'm reading from the New King James. And it starts off by saying, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. 
Verse 6, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Verse 10, But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. That passage was so encouraging to me. It begins by reminding us that we are, in verse 5, to submit to one another, to our elders and to God. This is that place of being brave and checking in, examining and asking. It's when we submit to God that he is able to speak to us. It reminds us that God doesn't like the proud, but will reach out and extend grace to those that are humble. And when we do humble ourselves, he will lift us up. And then the part that we all know, most people know the part about the devil is a roaring lion. We're to resist him and be steadfast in the faith. Knowing that we are all suffering around the world, God will perfect us and strengthen and restore us. Isn't that such an encouragement today? So I pray that this has given you a new perspective during this COVID-19 time. And I pray that you embrace it if you haven't already and allow God to restore you back to himself and restore you in your relationships around you. Be encouraged, but let's be challenged today to check in with God and let him examine us. Let's be brave together and molt for Jesus. Amen. Let's be in the restoration business and let's partner with the restorer. But let's pray together. Jesus, we just thank you that you are our restorer and that even in the midst of suffering around the world and the midst of a new season that we're in, you still are in the restoration business and you still are doing a work in our lives and in our hearts and in our minds and in our spirits. God, we submit to you and we declare that you are king. You are king of our thoughts, of our actions, of our words, of the meditations of our heart. And Lord, we choose you we submit to you and choose you help us holy spirit and and reveal to us any areas that are a bit murky bit yucky that need cleaning up thank you jesus that you are with us and that you strengthen us and that you will establish and perfect us we thank you jesus for being with us and never leaving us or forsaking us in any season that we face thank you jesus amen, amen.